I'm not a scholar. I'm, I know, yeah. I, I'm not an expert. Are, are you rolling? Because I'll just start. I'm not an expert on Shakespeare. Uh, really, I'm not the be all and end all. I'm an actor and, I, and I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm not an intellectual. I'm a physical and an emotional. But uh, what, what I, I think is interesting is that, so I was saying to Jim, my husband, oh gosh, I, I don't know that I want to be talking about this. I just, I like to do Shakespeare. It's what I do. Um, but I'm not an authority. And then I said, but you know what? I think beware of the authority. Of course people should know something about Shakespeare. If nothing else, they can then tell funny jokes about Shakespeare. When I started teaching, I used to say, it's good to know Shakespeare, then you've got something to quote at cocktail parties. These days, nobody has cocktail parties anymore. I mean, imagine quoting Shakespeare in a rave. I don't think so. So studying Shakespeare, he's central to much of the literary heritage that we all love and adore and attack and criticize. He's also just so humane. He understands what humans are all about and he shows us by holding the mirror up to nature, he shows us our own reflection. Shakespeare wrote about nearly everything that we still go through today. Grief, sexual desire, romantic love, jealousy, greed, the loss of a child, the loss of a spouse, boredom, loneliness, homesickness, sending your kid off to college. I mean, he's, he wrote about everything. And I think there's real danger in thinking that there is, um, that only the people in the, the ivory tower understand Shakespeare. The truth is that all of us, if we spend a little bit of time with it and aren't intimidated by the poetry, the poetry is really there for us, it's not against us. Um, but if we spend a little bit of time, it really becomes personal. The size and issues that he's tackling range from, from the most important personal fight and plight and struggle of love and unrequited love and lost love to kingdoms rising, falling, worlds hanging in the balance. And I think a lot of playwrights have trouble working on that scope. And when they try to work on that scope, to do it with such eloquence, that's what gets me about Shakespeare. There are parts of every story that appeal to every person. And it's not the same thing for each person. It could be a particular character, it could be a particular action, a particular situation. But there's something in there for everyone. And each play changes as you change as a person. So the Romeo and Juliet that I knew when I was 15 and in freshman English is different than the one that I experienced at age 40 sitting in the audience, seeing people on stage going through the same story but from a very different perspective. So I think what makes Shakespeare unique in that way is that those images, those ideas, they're not just big speeches. They can just be two words put together that catch our breath in a way that nothing else does. Why study Shakespeare in a way? It's the question of why study literature? Why study the history of literature? Um, why study all these cultural artifacts? So much gets packed into that question. And I don't have an answer to it. Uh, I think actually in a way the answer is to just keep asking that question. He's an absolutely amazing observer of human nature. and. By going into his works in depth and looking at the characters who are as real and intricate as, as you and I, um, I found, at least by personal experience and, and by talking with other people, that it really gives a deeper understanding, not just of literature, but of the world and the people in it. Most of the people in this country recognize the name Shakespeare, and they probably are quoting him when they don't know it, if they're speaking English. Shakespeare is as important to learn as any math 
or science or practical skill that you're going to take with you into the workforce. Shakespeare is a vehicle instead of a destination. It's a vehicle that allows you to understand all the complex texts that you may have to encounter in your world in the future. I think the thing about Shakespeare that's so important and that's so useful for all of us is that he has each of his characters who experience heartbreak or experience joy, experience birth, experience loss. He has them hold up that experience like a jewel. Shakespeare's not a stable thing, right? It's not a, it's not a, not something that's set in stone. It's not a tablet that, you know, Moses found on, <laughs> on the mountain. Uh, instead, it's something that changes um, over time, that was never set even when it was printed. It was, you know, constantly evolving and changing, and actors changed it, actors still change it, um, readers still change it. But the basic movement through a text movement through a complex text, a language that's 400 years um, removed from our own, um, if you can do that, you can read law books, you can <laughs> read medical journals, you can, um, you can interact with your child's pediatrician, you can do any number of things, and, and that to me is what Shakespeare is really for. I, I, I'll confess that I think when I first started reading Shakespeare, I didn't know who he was as a, a person, this paragon, and so I will say I entered reading Shakespeare um, at, a, at, a, at a really um, kind of a privileged point in that I was able to approach him fearlessly because I didn't have that perspective of him. I think Shakespeare is an interesting uh, gateway, I would say, kind of, I would actually say uh, Shakespeare is an interesting gateway drug. I'm also going to say I'm a little ambivalent about it, too. Shakespeare can represent the most alienated thing to a lot of people. Shakespeare in a MOOC makes sense to me because Shakespeare has occupied every other space and culture. That's something that's pretty cool about Shakespeare, is that he shows up everywhere. Um, that work shows up everywhere. We see it in graffiti, we see it in um, movies, and we see it on television and we see it in in the newspaper. I mean, you could look at you could look at any of the stories that are out there, and there are analogs in Shakespeare. There's ways in which Shakespeare rears his head um, wherever you look. Shakespeare can be read in just one way. There are many different interpretations that each of us brings to Shakespeare and takes away from his texts based on sort of what we're reading for at that moment, where we are in our lives. When you read Shakespeare when you're 15, you might come away with something very different than when you read him and you're 30. I think the word genius is, is, a, is a subjective designation. It's, it's, a, it's a term we use to say what we value as what we think is most intelligent. I think that's an old-fashioned approach to Shakespeare, right? Like, here's the, Shakespeare is a lock, and the professor has the key. Oh, now you understand. Romeo and Juliet is uh, star-crossed lovers. The Tempest is an encounter narrative. Midsummer Night's Dream is the folly of young love. Much Ado About Nothing is, um, well, more mature love. <laughs> right? So to me, that I think a MOOC could, could potentially run into that old-fashioned uh, authoritarian pedagogical approach, right? I have the answer, I have the key for this mysterious lock that you're staring at. Um, and I think Shakespeare's much more vibrant and has potential relevancy, and I do say potential relevancy, when the students are allowed to debate it together. Courses are far too often focused on getting to a place of knowing. And I actually think that learning is about sitting in a place of not knowing.